Hi there. Oh boy, my camera's wobbly. So today I wanted to make a cream serum, an emulsified cream serum. On my Patreon, I am doing serums all month long and talking about them, all the different kinds. We're doing different variations of them over there. If you have not checked out my Patreon, please do. I post over there two to three times a week. I share formulas over there that I do not share to Facebook. And I'm basically just coming alongside my fellow formulators and fellow small business owners and helping them as much as I can and sharing as much information as I can and knowledge that I have, which isn't a lot. <laughs> so today I wanted to do an emulsified cream serum. Um, I really like serums. They're a lot of fun and you can add some of the thicker, heavier ingredients like butters to serums and make them you know, stay liquid, which is really nice. And they're a little bit more hydrating than say a water-based serum. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a brightening serum. And I think we're going to do some kojic acid depalmitate with some vitamin C, which is, I think, glycerol asorbate is the version I'm going to use today with some nice extracts. So there's some herbs and stuff we can do to contribute to the brightening. So licorice root is a great one, which I believe I made in my herbal extract video. Uh, mulberry extract is another amazing herb. Those have tyrosinase inhibitors in them, so they help uh, with melasma and they help keep it from growing and getting worse. And so I like to use those in my brightening ingredients. I think I'm also gonna do caffeine extract in this and we're gonna use an emulsifier that I really haven't used too much, but I keep hearing about it, uh, Mon Montanov 202, which is classified as a natural emulsifier. So I'm curious to see how it's going to do in this formula. Now it has no thickening capabilities, which basically allows us to make an emulsification and then we can control the thickness with the thickener we use, which I'm going to be doing hydroxyethyl cellulose today, which is another natural thickener, but um, I really like how it works. So it works really well in a cream serum. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. Supplies you'll need to make this are heat safe jars, a scale that can weigh in 0.01 gram increments, an immersion blender, a pH reader, and bottles to store it in. Okay, let's look at some of these ingredients. For our emulsifier, we're using Montanov 202, which is a natural emulsifier consisting of ra arachidyl alcohol, behenyl alcohol, and arachidyl glucoside. It's Cosmos certified, which if that's important to you, great. I don't really worry about Cosmos or Echo Cert certification too much. This emulsifier has no thickener in it. It's non-ionic and it's said to be a lightweight and fast absorbing emulsifier with a mattifying effect. So that sounds nice. For our thickener, we're going to be using hydroxyethyl cellulose. This one does really well with all kinds of formulas, especially those with electrolytes. And it's really nice and velvety on the skin, so that's why I chose that thickener. You can use xanthan gum if you want. Uh, you'd probably need to use a little bit less in the formula because xanthan gum is a really strong thickener. And kojic acid depalmitate is also what we're using. It's for brightening. It's the stable version of kojic acid, which is normally very unstable and it doesn't really last very long in a formula. It will turn bright yellow when it goes bad. So the kojic acid depalmitate is better uh, to use. It's just easier to formulate with. So this is going to be helping with the brightening goal that we have for the serum. And I'm also going to use two different silicones because silicones and serums go together like Laverne and Shirley. They really complement the formula and give it really nice slip on the skin. LC995 is more volatile where dimethicone D350 is more emollient. So they complement each other really well. And I like using LC995 when I'm using a lot of actives. We're also going to use glycerol asorbate, which is a stable derivative form of vitamin C to help boost our brightening effect. And for my extracts, I'll be using caffeine, licorice root, and mulberry, all which are great for brightening the skin. 
For my oil phase, I'll be using tallow. Yes, you heard that right, tallow. You can totally use this in a serum and it works, I promise. I love tallow, so let's see what kind of benefits it imparts to the serum. And for my oil, I'm gonna be using squalane because it's got a very nice lightweight skin feel. Now for the preservative, I'd recommend not using Optifin or phenoxyethanol at all really as it's really known for thinning out emulsions. And since our emulsion is going to be really thin, it will likely break the emulsion. And I've tried it before with Optifin and it usually breaks the emulsion every time. So use what you have handy, but I would steer clear of the phenoxyethanol group of preservatives. I'm going to just use good old Germol Plus for this because it's a great preservative and it's super easy to work with. I wanted to use a hydrosol, so I'm going to use my aloe vera and basil hydrosol. So here is the full formula. I decided last minute to also use allantoin in this. Now on Lotion Crafter, they recommend to put it in the C phase under high agitation. And I always use it at 0.50% and I put it in the C phase and just stir it in really well. And this ingredient can actually recrystallize if it's added in the water phase and heated and not suspended properly during cooling. So it's really imperative to stir it in really well. If you are able to use the immersion blender on it a few times, that really helps. Allantoin is a compound that is found in the comfrey plant and it's excellent for soothing and healing benefits. It's great for the skin, so I like to use it from time to time. Another FYI, kojic acid depalmatate can actually go in the B phase with the oils as it can sometimes not break down very well in the C phase. It's not heat sensitive, so it will be fine in the B phase. But I, of course, put it in the C phase because I wasn't really thinking. But that's okay, because it really didn't impact the formula too much. What can happen is it can leave these tiny little crystal flakes on the skin when it's not fully broken down. It doesn't cause any issues. It's not irritating. It just is a purely aesthetic thing. So keep that in mind. I did a 285 gram batch and here are the weights for that. Now you don't have to use all the extras that I did in this formula. If you want to make this easy and simply a hydrating serum without all the bells and whistles, you can remove the silicones, the vitamin C, the kojic acid, just add whatever you take away a uh, percentage to the water phase. So just remember that. <clears throat> So we're going to start with our water phase and add our disodium EDTA and our propendiol. And I always recommend using a chelator like disodium EDTA or sodium phytate because it does help boost your preservative. And for our B phase, we're going to be adding our Montanov 202, tallow, squalane, and hydroxyethyl cellulose. I like adding the hydroxyethyl cellulose to the oil phase as it doesn't clump as bad in there. But remember, it's not going to fully melt when we heat our B phase and our A phase, and that's okay. Um, once you blend this, it all mixes in. So we're going to put these on our heat in our double broiler and we're going to cover our water phase with foil. You can cover your B phase with foil too if you want. It'll help hold the heat in faster, but I don't always cover it with foil. Once these are bo both fully heated to about 170 degrees, because the Montanov won't melt until it really hits that temp, so it does need to be pretty hot to get it to fully melt. But while that's heating, let's go do our phase C. So we're going to do our dimethicone, allantoin, mulberry extract, our licorice root extract, caffeine extract, and the kojic acid, which should have gone in the B phase. Uh, but that's okay.
It's really lightweight, so it's going to look like I'm putting a lot of it in, but it's just really light on the scale. And I'm going to add our preservative, and I did not use a vitamin E in this. You can, of course, if you want, but I'm on a budget over here. <laughs> and then our vitamin C and our silicones, and we're going to mixy mix that up and cover that with foil so it doesn't evaporate. So once both phase A and B are fully melted, I'm actually going to pour some of my water phase into the B phase to help it mix better. And then I'll just pour it back into my bigger beaker. Montanov likes to solidify really quickly, so this will help it from doing that. Now we're going to use our immersion blender and give it a few short spurts. Now you don't want to over mix this because the Montanov is a liquid crystal emulsifier and those don't like to be over mixed. They're kind of touchy. So we're just going to mix it until it's blended and then we're going to stop and stir it slowly by hand with a spatula until it starts to thicken up. And it really doesn't take long, only a few minutes. Once that's cooled down enough, we can hand mix in our face C. Remember to mix this in really well so the Allen Tone mixes in. And we're going to check our pH. We want it to be between 4.5 and 5.5. And this was around 4.34. So I'm going to raise it just a pinch with my sodium hydroxide solution, which is just 10% sodium hydroxide and water. So this is the texture right now. It might thicken up a tiny pinch more, but it should stay pretty fluid. Let's see if I can do better this time than last time with getting it into the bottle. I'm right-handed too, but look how beautifully that pours out. It's just gorgeous. These are my favorite types of serums. They are so lovely and luxurious. I'm going to try some out on my hand here and the skin feel is really nice. It has a lot of slip and glide and it's fairly fast absorbing and it leaves a really soft light finish on the skin, not greasy at all. I actually used this on my face tonight and it was really nice. You will want to use this on a freshly washed face before your moisturizers. And I noticed it definitely had a matte like finish, but with the tallow, it gave it some this semi-moisturizing feel. It's a really nice formula. I didn't notice any crystal flakes on my skin, so that's kind of a bonus, even though I did make a boo-boo with the formula. So there you have a beautiful emulsified tallow serum, a really lovely formula that I think you will love if you make this at home. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm working on some of the suggestions you all gave in previous videos of formulas you'd like to see. So those will be coming out soon. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Ciao.